Naked and Afraid is a show on Discovery Channel where they literally leave people to survive naked and afraid. Let's check it out. Beep whoop. Oh. I just cut my thumb open pretty good. That's one of the, the wounds that you don't want to get on your opposable thumb, a very useful tool in nature. In this jungle teeming with bacteria, Gary's open wound oh. could easily get infected. Oh, tell me he didn't just put it in his mouth. A lot of people think you need hydrogen peroxide or alcohol or something to clean wounds. You really don't. You just need some clean water, maybe some mild soap to irrigate it. And getting an infection in the hand is so dangerous because it can lead to an osteomyelitis, which is a bone infection, or even a septic arthritis, which is a joint infection. Those require hospitalization and IV antibiotics, not just oral. It's a pretty good gas and the only thing I know that could work out here for something like that is the soldier ant that has a big head on it and some jaws because what they'll do is if they clamp down, they won't let go. If I could find some of those, I could clamp down on there and use them like sutures. This is like one of those things that sounds good in survival textbooks, but I can't imagine practically this is gonna work. <laughs> This guy's performing a science experiment on his wound. Rip the body off. Oh, that worked. I think you're probably better off getting some kind of clean leaf or something and putting pressure on it and wrapping it rather than you are putting ants and infecting the wound further. Damn it. Are you okay? I got bit by something. Yeah, this Ooh. does not look good, Tim. That looks like some kind of venomous bite. The typical black pit right in the center of the bite makes me think that it's a violent spider. Usually, we say recluse spiders like that um, have such small teeth that they can't even really penetrate that deep to really truly give you their poison. But it does enter like the first layer of your skin, which can cause a localized irritation. It hurt when I first bit me, but everything seems to be okay. There you go, look at that. Science is science. Science is science. My sunburn looks really disgusting right now. Wow. Leanne's newly formed fluid-filled blisters provide an extra layer of protection between damaged skin and the sun. But if these blisters rupture, they can expose the body to infection. And they can expose the body's vulnerable skin to even more sun damage. Sunburn hurts more than bug bites. Ooh. Oh, God, that's such bad. Burns. And my ankles are just like super swollen. Oh my God. Yeah, so bug bites. There's ankle edema, pedal edema. Oh my God, the, the skin tissue looks terrible. Can't take much more of this. Yeah, I think they're gonna have to pull her out. The sunburn on that side is. Honestly, it's like it's going through the dermal layer. It looks like almost reaching adipose tissue. And it's gonna speed up her dehydration as well. I got a big infection on my back. Oh, that is a big infection on his back. I pretty much have no doubt that is that is a true cellulitis. And there could be an abscess in there as well. The wound is infected. Yeah. It has a necrotic region in the center of it. It's dead tissue. The medic determines that there is no larva growing under Gary's skin, but the area is severely infected. What happens is when you get an infection, sometimes your body actually builds up a wall of protection around the infection, but that's actually problematic as that abscess can continue to grow because of the infection getting worse. While it's not causing a problem at the moment, anytime it would burst, it would cause a severe problem. And taking antibiotics doesn't even really solve the problem of an abscess. The treatment for an abscess is incision and drainage of said abscess. I can't believe they're doing this on the show. My God. This is your... Holy crap. That's fish bait. <laughs> That's fish bait. Wow, this guy's chill for someone that just got a piece of their back cut off. Someone's gonna slip and fall. Hold on. Drop it if you have to. No, it can't get wet. Whoa, 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 wait. I gotcha. Whoa. Ah! Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh. oh. This is the one with a metal plate in it. What's the one with the metal plate in it? Her clavicle? <laughs> oh. oh, that's really bad. The clavicle is supposed to go from the breastbone here to the acromion, which is at the top of the shoulder. And hers is like going up here, like much further away from the intended point at the acromion. And one of the biggest dangers to this is that that loose bone can actually puncture the lung and cause your lung to collapse. Yo. 
Oh my goodness. What is that? It's a huge banana tree. Oh, that's, it. are those unripe bananas? So green. I don't think those are gonna be edible. Unripe bananas are edible. They just have higher starch content, lower su simple sugar content, also less antioxidants. I'm gonna roast some of these bananas and see if I can make them edible. These don't look like They're bananas roast, to me. We will still be able to eat it. I mash them together, some snail, and I add a little water. It's not bad. No, no, it's good. <laughs> I love that they convinced themselves. Oh, at least have the decency to throw up a little further away from the sleeping area. Oh, looks like those patties were no bueno. Oh my God! You all right? She's not all right, my guy. You need a medic stat. She's probably hypotensive. Yo. <gasps> Not good, not good, not good. Oh, did he chop his finger off? Just like your finger open? The finger and the thumb. It's oh. pretty bad. Looks like a piece of his pointer finger just got completely chopped off. This is quite deep. I can actually see a bone there. Wow. There's a possibility that you've actually cut a vein. Yeah, again, hand, very dangerous area to develop all those infections we talked about earlier. And the fact that he's losing so much blood in the wild, I mean, that's essentially uh, a death sentence. Whoa, look at this. This is edible. I can have oh, that man, it's so scary unless you're like a mushroom expert to know which mushrooms are edible, which ones are not, uh, which ones you have to heat up to destroy the toxins inside of them because some of them have toxins that are really bad and heat usually denatures them, but man, it's hard to know which ones are safe. Dave is admitted into the hospital. I love that he walks in with the outfit and everything. We just got an update from the nurse that Dave's condition definitely declined some. He's starting to get uh, some GI issues as far as like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Basically sounds like his body is violently trying to expel something that it doesn't like. Experts identified the mushrooms Dave consumed as fried chicken mushrooms, which should not be eaten raw. Wow. Don't eat fried chicken mushrooms raw. This morning, my legs were completely covered in red dots. It looked like some kind of deadly, this contagious disease. It was awful. What I don't understand is on shows like this, when they sleep outdoors and they get this terrible rash, how are they certain that this rash is caused by bug bites, allergic contaminants, some kind of viral illness? Because you're exposed to so much. And the way we make these diagnoses in our hospitals and our offices is by getting a thorough history. But if your history is like, yeah, I was sleeping in a bunch of ants, eating a bunch of questionable foods, potentially exposed to poison ivy. Like, how do you make a diagnosis then? Laura and Glenn have been besieged by sand flies, also known as chitras, less than one eighth of an inch. They're the smallest of all biting and stinging insects. It is the worst itching I've ever experienced, and it's all over my body. These bites are not usually super terrible. I mean, sometimes they can carry a parasite uh, that can lead to lesh uh, maniasis, but that's not usually life threatening. But I can tell that it's really annoying. <laughs> My body has decided it's just too much, and I'm finally having a reaction. I could go into anaphylactic shock and be dead within minutes. I don't know that it's clear that she's having an anaphylactic attack. You definitely want to check for that and see if that she has oral swelling, a drop in blood pressure, but she could be just having a massive amount of histamine produced across her skin, leading to a lot of swelling, leading to lower blood pressure, leading to her feeling uncomfortable. I don't know if I would classify that as anaphylactic shock. What happened, he broke his toe? Oh, that's a cut. His toe is actually spread. Um, it's spread a little bit more. The way that we monitor spread here is we usually use a marker when a patient first comes in, we'll start a treatment, and we see that the redness or the irritation is moving away from the margins. If it's starting to spread past them, that means we haven't potentially chosen the right antibiotic. So it appears that Matt has acquired uh, signs and symptoms of cellulitis in his foot. The superficial skin infection on the foot, again, is very dangerous because of the many small bones of the foot that can lead to osteomyelitis. Again, requiring hospitalization, IV antibiotics, extremely painful, unable to ambulate. In the survival situation, it's kind of a, a no-go. Right. Little stick, okay? Okay. Oh, what are they so doing? So what she's doing, she just made an incision and she's draining the pus out of it. Oh, okay. she thinks it's abscess? I think that just like evacuate him and give him antibiotics. I'm tripping out over here. Catch your breath. 
Is this a panic attack? Yes, yes. Good. Fire in enclosed space. What's happening? Dehydration? Silence. Can you look at me? I can't catch my breath. Is he having a heart attack? Not doing so well. Your blood pressure 140 over 100. All right, so very high blood pressure. Unclear why. I mean, he's a stressful state. It's a combination of heat stroke and dehydration. The recommendation is that we evac him to the ambulance station. I mean, at least for now, spill water all over his body, allow himself to cool down. Because remember, when you put water on a hot body and it evaporates, that actually cools the superficial skin surface. You've heard of street magic, but have you heard of street medicine, AKA curbside consult? Check out my last episode and leave a comment where you think I should go next. As always, stay happy and healthy.